Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Danielle. If you haven't been here before, thanks for coming along. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And right before you watch this video, that big red square that says subscribe, yeah, go click that right down below with the little notification bell. It'll tell you when I'm posting. I have a brand new posting schedule. I'm posting every Tuesday, every week, right now, once a week. Let's get into the video. excerpt from the NCAA website on their mental health page. They have like a mental health page that they talk about their goals and their guide on how to deal with kids with mental health issues. We strive to improve access to quality mental health care with the goal of creating culture where care seeking for mental health issues is as normative as care seeking for physical injuries. I think that's so funny because I don't feel they did any of that. The NCAA did not care about any of the mental health issues going on in high school. They did not want to care. They did not want to create a good environment or give quality options to anybody. The only thing they did was push it off to the school and the school created a liability from it. They forced one of my ex-teammates to leave because of the way that she felt and they didn't create a good environment for her to stay or want to get education or stay on the team and <clears throat> for somebody to be pushed out because of their mental health issues and pushed away from the dream that they worked really hard to get to is so unfair and uh, mental health is still a very big stigma and they could say that they strive to create a culture where care seeking is normative but they don't <clears throat> another excerpt from the ncaa website that i thought was very intriguing and basically a lie because they don't do that health promoting environments that support mental health well-being and resilience resilience um <clears throat> i would think that they support pushing people away more than they support people to be resilient in their situation um, they make it so hard for them and they make they ostracize them so much and so bad that they just want to leave and that doesn't create a resilient person that creates a very resentful person especially to the NCAA especially to the school that they're going to so for them to say that they promote a healthy environment is so ridiculous to me they say that on their website that they want to do pre mental health screenings I feel like pre-mental health screenings literally give them a reason to not give a kid a scholarship. They're gonna say and twist it that they're gonna say it's gonna be a very helpful situation because they're gonna know how to actively help the kid when they get into the school. But after that pre-mental health screening and you see that they have issues, are you actually going to give them a scholarship? Are you actually going to award them that money? Because I don't think so. Um, I think if the NCAA or the schools could see that this kid is a problem child from the start, they won't even give them the time of the day. And I only say problem child is because that's what I was called and that's what my teammates were called when we had mental health issues. We were problem ch children. So I am in no way, shape, or form ungrateful for the opportunity that I have possessed playing Division One softball. Um, I was the lucky... I think it's like 1.2% of all tra travel softball players that play Division One, and I'm so grateful for that experience. I'm just telling you my NCAA nightmare <laughs> experience. It's very um, rare that people get this experience, and it's very rare that people have a bad time in college playing sports, but unfortunately, I did. So I, it's time that I tell my story, and it's time that people understand and know in case they're going through the same thing. It doesn't happen just to me. So I know there's other people out there that are dealing with or have dealt with the situation. Maybe this gives them, you know, some courage to go and tell their story as well. So let's get into it. So the first thing is I got into college my freshman year and my freshman year was kind of a shit show. 
I got there and the people that recruited me left a month before I got there. Um, so this kind of starts my NCAA nightmare because as a freshman going into a sport in, in college, you are excited, you're ecstatic, you sign to that coach, you're excited to build with that coach. And once they leave, you're like set into, I don't know, this mindset of oh, what the fuck do I do? So my coaches had explained that I could not leave my, my school. I was set there because I had signed my NOI. And so I was devastated. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what happened. And I didn't know if we were getting a new coach or if we weren't getting a new coach. And <clears throat> long story short, the assistant coach stepped in to be the interim head coach, which means they're just the head coach for the year until they find somebody. That was the worst thing ever. I will not name names, but that coach was the worst person, mentally abusive, screamed at us all the time, never coached us in a way. The assistant coach and the interim head coach always fought between plays and situations. And so as a player in that environment, you don't ever know how to settle down. You don't ever know a system and you don't ever know a routine. So everybody was always on edge. We always fought with each other. So I never had fun and I didn't have a way out or an outlet because softball was always my outlet. So <clears throat> always having fights, always having debacles and situations. And when we were supposed to be enjoying our time playing the sport and going the places we went, it was always an issue or there was always a situation um the whole freshman year we did things by the book because of the interim head coach so we signed the practice logs which means you have to be um you're permitted a certain amount of hours to practice per week um in the sport in whatever season you're in and we did that all of freshman year which is good so we did things by the book but the mental abuse was crazy and at that point in time you don't really notice the mental abuse going on because you're just a freshman, you're like, okay, maybe this is how it's supposed to be. And maybe I'm just being a baby, or maybe I'm just not pushing through what I'm supposed to be pushing through. It should be working hard, but it should be happy, fun, and it should be a nice routine. It should not ever be chaos. There should never be mental abuse involved, name calling, games played, mental games played. You never know who your friends are, who your people are getting betrayed by a lot of people, even staff members. It's like this always uneasiness. So I was in a very hard major as well. I was in marine and environmental science. So I had like double the credits everybody else did. Plus having to deal with some horrible teammates and horrible coaches. Get, don't get me wrong. There's some teammates and then they know who they are that I loved absolutely dearly. But there are others that I just didn't click with and that's okay, but it was like World War III every time something had happened. And um, I take a full responsibility for a lot of the fights that I had started. We also were all in a bad headspace. So I don't hold any grudges for who started fights with me and who I started fights with and all this. It's all water under the bridge, but because of the environment we were subjected to, we were inclined to start fights. We were inclined to um play games with each other and you know it was hard to be who you really were because you didn't know who had your back and you didn't know who didn't it was like the oddest year of softball i've ever had in my entire life so during my first year our team's mental health was zero including mine we had some girls have to go to therapy we had some situations go down with you know, the staff psychology department has to come and like interim some people and I'm not gonna name names. One of them was me because I literally didn't know who I was anymore. I feel like I was beaten down so low at, into a place where I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say and I didn't know how to act anymore. And that should never happen <laughs> at a place where your coaches or your you know, staff members are supposed to protect you. They're supposed to encourage you and they're supposed to push you to be a better person, not just 
push you to the point where you, you feel worthless. And I feel like a lot of people on my team felt that way, not just me. I was just a little bit more boisterous about it. And that's just how I've always been, but it never should have gotten to that point. And never, the school should have never let it happen. 18, 19 girls to go through that day in and day out, it takes a toll out on you. It makes you mentally stressed to the point where you cannot function as a normal human being. And that should never, ever, ever happen. So during that time frame, I had called the NCAA for advice on what I could do about the situation. The only thing they had told me after me calling like six or seven times and not getting a hold of anybody, they told me that they do a yearly audit on college coaches and I could put in an appeal and that appeal would take two to three months or something like that. And I feel like they were just like brushing me off. They wouldn't give me any actual answers and they didn't really care. So I didn't go to a big SEC, big 10 school. I went to a very small division one school. So we kind of flew under the NCAA's radar a lot of the time. Um, if anything big really happened, they would show up. But if it was just like individual little cases, they tried to brush them under the rug as much as possible without giving that much effort into fixing the issue. I couldn't get a hold of them on the phone. I couldn't really get an answer out of them. I went to my athletic director, which was an extreme mistake because he didn't really give a shit. That was the worst freshman year ever. Year two, I went in knowing that over the summer they had fired my interim head coach, even though he was still there and he was the assistant coach. So you could only imagine that dynamic. They hired this man no names i'm not gonna say any names but long story short he was a larger version of the other coach he did the exact same things for some opinion thought he was way worse because he would try to like be your friend and get as much information out of you and then use that information against you so it was double the mental health issues it was double the softball issues. He never coached anything. He didn't even give us drills. All we did was scrimmage every single day. So I felt on top of the, our relationship as you know teammates, we didn't get better as players. So now we're really frustrated because all of our softball skills are like going down the toilet because there's only so much we can do on our own, especially with being beaten down and being down and being down. It was this relentless, clawing for like anything that we could get that was remotely good or encouraging and it was like this roller coaster of emotions because he would build us all up and like it would be so good and it was a really good environment and then all of a sudden like we just all like shit it just didn't make any sense at the end of the year after we went through all of these things a lot of comments that i will not say that he had given to me personally and i remember them to this day and they hurt me to this day. I and a lot of the parents and a lot of the like student athletes had complained. So we had to go to the AD, which you already remember from my previous comment that the AD didn't do shit last year. So what makes it any different now? We go to the AD and so we choose to go in, me and two other friends choose to go in together and explain everything. So there's somebody next to us like transcribing the interviews and which is fine which th we think like okay that's fine you know they probably just want to remember everything we say when they're doing this we as you know young kids don't really well young adults don't ask for any confidentiality paperwork because we don't know like we don't know the legalities of that stuff so we just assume that it was all going to be confidential and we were wrong next year when we came in when he was still the coach didn't get fired he had a list of everything everybody said what time they said it and who they said it to and about and in my head we're sitting in this meeting getting screamed at because now he knows like everything we think about him on like a personal level and i just didn't understand how our school and the ncaa thought that that was going to help anything because it just made it 10 times worse. He made it a living hell for those girls. We didn't have names. He called us by our numbers. He 
treated us like shit, only talked to us when we needed something or we needed to talk to him about whatever we needed to talk to him about. And it made everything though a living hell. And it was impossible to play. It was impossible to do work. It was impossible to be there without knowing, you know, you're being criticized for every little move you do. I think as a team, we it brought us together a little bit because I think the new girls knew, okay, this isn't right. And then the old girls kind of, we knew like if we didn't come together a little bit more that we would eventually, you know, fall apart because of how bad everything was getting with our coach and how bad of a coach he really was. Um, and it was so confusing to everybody on the outside because this coach had pri come from a school prior where he was there for a really long time and the girls loved him there. And I think it, once we told our story that people didn't really believe us or they thought that it was just us and they didn't think that it was a you know, an issue from our environment. Do your research, people make sure that you are at a place that is somewhere that you are going to strive both academically and athletically if you find that that school is firing people left and right and always have a turnover rate there's something wrong and there's a bad apple somewhere in the bunch which obviously it's a live and learn experience but that year was one of the hardest years because we had to deal with the mental abuse the academic abuse they weren't helping us get tutors they weren't helping us go through like situations where our teachers didn't want us to leave for softball games like we didn't have any support in any of those areas that as a division one school like you're supposed to have handled for you it was just extremely stressful with the hard the really hard schedule we had and like the amount of mental abuse we were really succumbing to this man literally after our last game of the season, he walked out, didn't say two words to us, walked on the bus. We drove home from, I think we were in like Maryland or whatever. After the game we had lost or something. And he walked out of the field, didn't even come and give a hug or say anything. Walked on the bus, walked off the bus with his, his luggage and his suitcase. And I've never seen him since. So that just shows you what kind of character he had as a person and what kind of character you know that school allowed that person to come and be a head coach at during that third year like i said um i think i don't i don't think i split it up but we had that same guy for two years because um he didn't get fired <laughs> in between but during that third year i wanted to transfer i wanted to transfer schools i wanted to leave i didn't care if i missed or lost a year i didn't care um but they made it impossible because they wouldn't release me from the school in spite of you know everything i was saying and going through i was trying to reach out to as many people as possible to find out help um i was reaching out to our trainers which then told him what i was saying i was reaching out to our um, athletic training staff which then told him what I was saying. I was reaching out to other athletes, athletes, which then told him what I was saying. I was reaching out to other coaches, which then told him what I was saying. I had nobody in my corner and I had nobody that was willing to help me through the process I was going through or the agony or the situation I was going through. Every time I turned around, I was getting betrayed by so many people. Me as a student athlete at the school, I was really, really unhappy being there because I wanted to play softball. And the fact that I have better friends from just like being a normal person than actually my having my teammates for four years is sad. It's really sad. And I feel like I blame a lot of that on the coaching staff and I blame that a lot on the school because we were not in a good environment to create those relationships. We were not in a good environment to be good people. And I don't blame any of the people on my team anymore about that. Like anybody that has a beef or anybody that I have a beef with or used to, I don't anymore. I don't care. I wish them all the best and I love them with all my heart. And I don't feel that we were given the best tools to succeed as people and as players and as teammates. And it sucks because you go to a school wanting to become a better person, wanting to reach for that common goal and eventually you only hit a certain point when you don't have any resources to do so. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Not every coach is bad and I learned that my fourth year because I was our fourth coach and 
honestly everybody was so weary about her we were just like oh god what are we gonna get ourselves into again like is hampton give us, gonna give us these like couple that's gonna fight all the time like it's just so bad so we all had trust issues at that point like we this is the fourth time this one man and i will not name his name because he is obviously i don't want to do that but he is a saint because he was the only one looking out for us he finally realized what kind of person our prior coach was because he saw him in the real light and it was only a matter of time before one of these coaches was gonna be saw in their actual light and he saved us because he brought one of the best people in my life still today and i give her all the grace of god and i give him all the grace of god both of them are amazing they're like super parents their kids are amazing they are the most supportive people that i know and without them in my life even today i think that i would be a very different person right now without them coming in that fourth year and saving us literally saving us i'm you think i'm dramatic but i'm saying like they cared for us they showed us love they showed us compassion understanding they forced us to be people outside of the field they <clears throat> forced us really raised to our abilities and our potential unlike the three years i was there where they didn't really care very much for us as people and i think that with all the love that we gained in that short period of time it changed all of us and it really gave us hope in knowing that not every school is like this and a person is bad <clears throat> where the ncaa failed us is they didn't intervene faster or they didn't intervene at all it was the schools this one person in the school that forced the school because he had so much power to change our coaching habits and to change the way that they approached getting a new coach and and I understand behind the scenes, coaches don't make a lot of money. Somebody at my school is definitely not making enough to feel good. And I understand that that puts a lot of stress on families and probably other people. So I've learned to <clears throat> let go of what my coaches or prior coaches have done to me and said to me because I don't know what went on behind closed doors. I don't know what their lives had in store for them. I don't know what they did on their in their daily basis to be as upset and mean and take it out on all of us. But <clears throat> our coaches for our fourth year saved us and they're literally the most amazing people I know and the most amazing people that should be shouted to the rooftops. I inspire anybody to do something that they love and create a situation where they're in a place of love because anybody that goes through mental health is <clears throat> a warrior in my eyes because it is a internal battle that nobody else understands because they can't see it so if you've ever gone through anything hard or um, remotely disturbing inside of your head I understand and I've been there and you can get through it I got through it, you can get through it. Every single day is a battle. I still deal with it today. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below.